The end of the year always feels like a scramble for everyone to get in at least one last final song that's still fresh on everyone's mind before award season begins. And this year is no exception. For the past few months, at least a few big names have been competing with each other every other week now, and now that the final batch of the year is out, it's time to start looking back on the year and enjoy some of the final big releases. With all that said though, this was definitely the month for Soloist, with not one or two, but four big debuts scattered throughout the month, as well as a few anticipated comebacks here and there, the Soloist this month really stole the show. Many of the debuts impressed me, and even some of their comebacks I think are their best yet. This definitely wasn't the biggest or best month of the year so far, but I have to say, I think a lot of these artists ended up surprising me in the long run. Anyways, let's get this thing moving. Please buckle your seatbelts and get ready for the ride. <laughs> While I don't love the song itself, I do still think it was a step in the right direction for this group. Their debut, while lacking some substance, was a great introduction to the group as a whole. It did a great job of showing off the individual members and what they're good at, as well as giving just a small taste of what's in store for their careers. And now that we know these girls and what they're capable of, Anti-Fragile starts to slowly add layers onto a once blank slate. The music now has a reason for being, a message beyond just, hey, we're here. The music video finally has a direction this time, and the girls don't look like they just rolled up in whatever they went to bed in. I think it's really just personal taste holding me back from liking the song. The production is clean, everything feels truly finalized, and there are some really interesting elements added into the song here and there that even I can appreciate. Literally the only thing holding me back from enjoying the song is the choice in genre, and that really just boils down to personal preference. This is a really solid comeback, all things considered. It's a well-made song and style of music that these girls can pull off well, and while I do hope their next release brings something new to the table again, I do still appreciate the dive into a more concrete concept and execution of it for this comeback. Yes, I think a lot of people would agree when I say that the song itself didn't quite live up to the concept. Between the concept and lyrics, I could sit here and pick apart each individual line and message that they're trying to convey, and it would take me hours to finally get through it all. It takes guts to fully commit to a concept such as this, and I really do appreciate the fact that people seem to be taking it well. If this was based on execution of concept alone, this would absolutely wash over like a tidal wave. But when taking the music into account, it leaves a bit to be desired. The classical elements were definitely necessary for a song like this, but I do think it could have been introduced to the other melodies a bit better than it was. Classical samples are a hit and miss in music. If you stay too close to the original, the song runs the risk of feeling outdated on release. However, if you manage to blend it in with some more modern elements of music, I think it could come out sounding really well. I think the main issue here is the fact that the instrumental is on full display. It doesn't blend in with the music, but maybe that was the point. This is a really hard song to judge, as the message behind it is clearly the main point of it being released in the first place. I wish I could get behind the song a bit more, but that's not to say I don't still appreciate everything that came with it, and I have already found myself visiting the music video quite a few times since its release. It may seem a bit ridiculous, but songs like these, especially from artists many people already look up to, are really important to convey these sort of messages to a wider audience. Music alone may not make much of a change, but it is an important component. They may not be the front runners in this revolution, but they are certainly going to inspire those who are. While I have tuned in to pretty much all of Wano's releases this far, this is the only one that I think has truly stuck with me in this way. Most of his other songs feel like just that, a song. Not to say any of them are bad, but all his comebacks so far have just felt like the same concept in a different font. I know it's kind of his brand by this point, but it can be a bit disappointing when the most exciting part of the music video is guessing how much of a shirt he'll have on when the next scene appears. That being said, this song finally seems to have an idea to latch onto, both in song and in concept. Don't Regret is your pretty run-of-the-mill pop-punk song. It's not anything too special, but I don't think the choice to go this route was a bad one. It's definitely not Wano's strong suit, and I don't really expect to see something like this from him again, but I do appreciate getting it even just this once. The pop punk trend tends to feel a bit commercial on the K-pop scene, but I don't really hate it. It reminds me of when bands like Five Sex of Summer or R5 are reaching mainstream media, and I think it's a nice little callback to those times. Don't Regret definitely isn't going to be one of those songs that classify Wano as an artist, but I do hope that this little detour from his usual comebacks will leak into his future ones. There finally feels like a direction in his music, and I really hope that this will continue. Boy, me, boy, I'm so 
Itzy is in the Disney era, and I am here for it. Overly simplified melodies, a half-assed production, and some of the cringiest lyrics I have ever heard. And I love all of it. Ever since Sneakers, people have been a bit put off by their change in sound, asking if they're really taking this seriously, but honestly, I don't think they are. This song dials the teenage angst up to a 9, and the lyrics are so bad they sound like a kid who was finally allowed to hang out with their older sibling, trying to fit in. Not to mention, this song was literally marketed like a bad Netflix horror movie. I don't think any of this was meant to be taken seriously. And I wish that we could all just sit back and have fun with music like this instead of nitpicking every single thing wrong with it. I really thought Leah would stand out the most in a song like this. She has a beautiful voice that is built for this overly poppy music, and I think a more laid-back concept like this would fit her really well. However, Cheon was the real hero here. She sounds amazing on this track, and her kind of oblivious cute persona fits this concept really well. This is the type of song that you sing along to with your friends simply because you can. Maybe it's cringy, maybe it's not the best song ever, but it's fun and catchy, and I could absolutely appreciate a song like this when I get one. <laughs> While this isn't my favorite DKZ song ever, I can't help but appreciate everything that came with it. This song feels like a collaboration between Blackpink's and Stray Kids' loudest and craziest songs, and while it is a bit jarring in places, I can't help but to love the absolute craziness in it. This song goes hard in the best way possible. Not to mention, it's extremely catchy. I learned to stop doubting DKZ when it comes to concepts after Lupin, but that doesn't mean they don't still surprise me every time they try something new and it works just as well as the previous song before. One of the main reasons I even got into DKZ in the first place is their performances, and it always worries me how they'll compare when their music actually starts to sound like some of the other groups around them. And yet they still impress me each and every time. I know he prefers the brighter concepts, but I really need to see Jong Hong front and center in more songs like these. He sounds amazing, and his sassy performance style really fits this heavier song surprisingly well. I really don't think this is going to be one of my favorite DKZ songs in the long run, but as always, everything that surrounds their music is always just as good, if not even better, than the song itself. Only One Of has been killing it this year with the solos. Each one so far has done a great job of complementing the individual member as well as representing Only One Of as a group. Rie's had probably been the one I was anticipating the most though, and clearly it was for a good reason. Because is a song dripped in emotional sabotage and a remembrance of what once was. There are parts of the song that make you want to scream along to it in frustration, but there are also parts that make you want to smile and remind you of happy memories. The song brings a melancholy feel to it. It lets happiness and sadness sing in unison and allows for its glossy harmonies to be coated in resentment. Rie brings all these emotions to life in his voice, dipping in and out from this bold sound down to a sweet melody. This was yet another great addition to the little series so far, and I cannot wait to see what the final two will bring us. I always feel a tad bit biased whenever it comes to discussing Dreamcatcher's music. Not only are they one of my favorite groups out there, but this is also the type of music that I happen to love the most. Dreamcatcher have experimented with their sound quite a bit recently, and I love that they seem to have taken on a more modern rock sound with their music as of recent. Ever since Boca, their sound has molded more and more into a traditional rock sound, and while I love the look and sound on them, it gets harder and harder to judge them in comparison to other K-pop groups with each and every comeback. Vision definitely stands out in the world of K-pop. It's loud, it's heavy, but it knows when to back off. The instrumental speaks more than the girls in some places, and the added layers of the real guitar and percussion is more than enough to put them outside of the box of K-pop. However, when it comes to other music within this genre, it doesn't really have that standout factor. It has a predictable production pattern that blends in with thousands of other songs like it. The chords and progressions used aren't anything special, and I think anyone that has listened to rock or metal, even just a bit, could see the lack of creativity in this song. That's not to say it's a bad song, or even that I'm tired of this look on Dreamcatcher. I still really like the song. Like, a lot. But in comparison to some of their early releases, or even something like Boca or Scream, it lacks a creative outlet, and I think that is something that is very obvious in this release. <laughs> Rockstar Kune is not something that I thought I needed, but man is it something that I have thoroughly enjoyed. 
Both his releases this year have been so much fun in very different ways. Kyun is an artist that could have came into his solo works with his voice alone and still impressed the masses, but I appreciate the dedication to music itself and I'm really glad he's making music that he enjoys, not because he knows he'll sound good on it, but simply because he likes this style of music. Youth is a song about growing up and learning how to live on one's own, but not so much in the, ah, the world is big and scary sort of way, but more in the looking back on your childhood and appreciating the person it made you sort of way. One of my favorite lines in the song goes, Soul feels new, although it was a familiar place for me. It really drove the song home. There's something about starting your life on your own that brings a new flavor to it, even if you're not far from your loved ones. Although I've never lived in a city as big as Seoul, moving out for the first time was a new experience for me and one that I'll never forget. Usually songs about growing up scare me in ways that I find hard to put into words, but this one gives me hope that in 10 years, I'll be able to look back on my life and appreciate what I'm doing right now and what I'm working towards. This song gives me hope that my efforts will pay off in the same way Kewens have. Why do I keep getting attracted? Yes, so I love this concept that Strikers have adopted these past couple of years. Maybe it looks a little bit different with every comeback, but this absolutely ridiculous and satire way that they've portrayed pretty much all of their titles since God's Been You is just downright amazing. Case 1 for 3 is one of the more notable additions to this list. Everything that happens, both in the song and the music video, feels like it was put there just to fuck with us. This is a love song. Why are they referencing horror movies? Why are they dressed as police? Why is everything on fire? Everything that happens has seemingly no correlation to the song or concept itself, and yet it works. This song thrives off catchy hooks and nonsense phrases. It has a directionless attitude, yet clearly has a great mood board behind it influencing its production patterns. This year has brought some of Stray Kids' best titles yet. It's actually been a relatively slow year for them, but I have to admit that the music we've got out of it has most definitely been worth it. I know people tend to get a bit annoyed when the only praise people have for Stray Kids is the fact that they're heavily involved in the creative process, but I seriously don't know who else could come up with this shit besides a bunch of boys in their 20s. It is great, and I really couldn't ask for anything more from them. I think this is always what I expected Becco's music to sound like, I just wasn't necessarily expecting it under these conditions. Becco has always played a huge role in not only producing Newest's music, but also molding their overall songs and concept as well. So it's not really any surprise that his debut carries a lot of those same ideas, just on a bit of a smaller scale. The song is smooth. It's the type of song you listen to while cruising down the highway with no direction in mind or a place to be. Becco has a pretty distinctive style when it comes to his works, but it's yet to feel overdone yet. Not only is it just not a style we, unfortunately, see very often on other artists, but each individual song is dynamic enough to keep from feeling stale or bored. The soundscape is often changing, switching from a funky guitar riff to a smooth bass line and then back into a synth-heavy line, all while having this catchy melody drifting over the top. No Rules, ironically enough, is no exception to that rule. And while it does sadden me a bit to see the sound on Becco alone, I can't help but appreciate his dedication to this artistry, and I can't wait to see where it takes him. This album is filled with so many different sounds already, I'm so excited to see which one will take the forefront next time. Will you be yeah, 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 yeah. YG has had two sounds recently, the loudest damn music you've ever heard, or 20 Tim's Nostalgia. And Hello definitely falls into the latter category of those two. Not that I'm complaining though. I've never been one for pop music, but this poppy idiom sound that plagued the radio back when people still listened to the radio is still one of my favorites from my childhood. And I love all the memories that attach themselves to the song from the first time I heard it. This song's only selling point really is the nostalgia coating that it's covered in, but that warm feeling I get in my gut every time I listen to it almost makes it an instant classic. There's only so much to say on a song such as this, but I do think it's a great example of if a group is having fun with their music, the listeners are likely to have a good time too. I don't think it's bad by any means to visit sounds of the past, especially when it comes out sounding like this. Treasure has never really piqued my interest before, but I'll be sure to look out for the next release after this one. I've never been the biggest Red Belt fan in the world, so I really wasn't expecting much from this debut. But man, was I wrong to doubt this. 
This song gets deep and gritty. It tugs under your skin until the absolutely nasty bass line is pulsing through your entire body. Sulky plays a great villain. The song brings a very ominous vibe with it, but Sulky takes that and breaks it down into something downright creepy. Wendy has always been the powerhouse of Red Velvet when it comes to belching out high notes, but Sulky brings this undertone with her into this album that isn't only interesting to listen to, but makes half of the songs on this release. She follows the dynamics perfectly, dropping low and twisting between the bass line in certain sections, only to burst into a full and free chorus whenever it hits. Not to mention her little growls and just overall musicality that she shows, even in the studio, is insane. Most of these songs would be good even on their own, but Silky takes them and makes them into something worth remembering. This is one hell of an album, and I really hope to see more from her in the future. You're not bad, but bad I do. Lovable is this anthem-like song that's absolutely bursting with excitement. I know we're all kind of sick and tired of the hey, love yourself concept in K-pop, but I really like the direction this song takes with it. It's on the more upbeat side, but it doesn't forget to add in that little hint of nostalgia to pull out your heartstrings. Yuri has a pretty outstanding voice, but all of her songs this far has played on its strengths. She's perfect for this sort of concept, and I really can't imagine someone else pulling off the song in the same way that she does. It's cute, romantic, a bit on the emotional side. Lovable is a love letter to those falling on hard times, and I think it's definitely going to be a song that I'll find myself turning back to in the future. The lyrics aren't coded in metaphors or phrases that you have to pick out to fully understand. It's a pick-me-up for those that need it, and just a good fun song for those that don't. Simple as that. And that is all that I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed, and as always, I'll see you next time, travelers.